In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we join the hungry crowd who gathered at the Galilean lakeside. We too come seeking Jesus, ask him to feed us with the bread of life. And so we ask the Lord's forgiveness for our failings as we prepare now for this celebration. Lord, you offer us food that endures. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are true, the true bread. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give life to the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives in the reign to thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole community of the sons of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and said to them, Why did we not die at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we were able to sit down to pans of meat and could eat bread to our heart's content? As it is, you have brought us to this wilderness to starve this whole company to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now I'll rain down bread for you from the heavens. Each day the people are to go out and gather the day's portion. I propose to test them in this way, to see whether they will follow my law or not. I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel. Say this to them, Between the two evenings you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have bread to your heart's content. Then you will learn that I, the Lord, am your God. And so it came about. Quails flew up in the evening, and they covered the camp. In the morning there was a coating of dew all around the camp. When the coating of dew lifted, there on the surface of the desert was a thing delicate, powdery, as fine as hoarfrost on the ground. When they saw this, the sons of Israel said to one another, What is that? not knowing what it was. That, said Moses to them, is the bread the Lord gives you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, we will tell them to the next generation. The glories of the Lord and his might. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna for their food and gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Mere men 
ate the bread of angels. He sent them abundance of food. He brought them to this holy land, to the mountain which his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I want to urge you in the name of the Lord not to go on living the aimless kind of life that pagans live. Now, that is hardly the way you have learnt from Christ unless you failed to hear him properly when you are taught what the truth is in Jesus. You must give up your old way of life. You must put aside your old self which gets corrupted by following illusory desires. Your mind must be renewed by a spiritual revolution so that you can put on the new self that has been created in God's way, in the goodness and holiness of the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please let us stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly you're not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering you, for on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer, This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. So they said, What sign will you give to show us that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert, as scripture says. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. And Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord.
the Israelites were moaning because they were short of food. They were in the wilderness and they complained to Moses. And Moses listened to them and then turned to the Lord and asked for his guidance and help. And the Lord told him that he would send quails in the evenings and bread in the mornings so that they could eat. There would be enough food for them to keep them going. And of course they fed on that, on the quails and the bread for nearly 40 years. But of course it wasn't the bread that Jesus was speaking about. Jesus was speaking about himself and his own body and blood. The Jews, of course, couldn't comprehend it at all. They couldn't understand. They didn't want to. All they were interested in was food to keep them from going hungry. But Jesus was talking of a different kind of bread. He was talking of his own body and blood, the bread of life. I tell you most solemnly, it's not what Moses gave you, bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And Jesus came down from heaven to give life to every single one of us. And we, of course, we receive the body and blood of Jesus at each Mass. And it's for us to be as worthy as we possibly can be to receive the Eucharist. And so we have the sacraments to help us, the sacrament of reconciliation, where we can turn to the Lord and ask for his forgiveness for the mistakes we make, so that we can be truly worthy of coming forward to receive the true bread, the body and blood of Jesus. And that is the bread that gives us eternal life. We are saying to Jesus, we love you. We want to share with you your love. And his love comes, comes through the Eucharist. And in the receiving of the Eucharist, we are as close to Jesus as we possibly can be while here on earth. For we're receiving him into our lives. But it's for us then to share what we have received we just don't keep the message of Jesus to ourselves, but we try to spread the message throughout the world, throughout our communities, throughout our families. And we do this by our reaction to the receiving of the Eucharist. And that reaction, of course, should always be a positive action of kindness, caring, sharing, wanting to make the sacrifices that we have to make to help someone in need. That's what Jesus is talking about. And he says to us, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. We will never be short. So we ask the Lord to help us, to strengthen our faith, as he does each time we receive Holy Communion. Our faith is strengthened. But we need to go out then and preach through our actions, through the way we live our lives, that we begin to spread the news of Christ's love to all and sundry. Let us pray that we'll always try to be as worthy as we possibly can be in the receiving of the Eucharist. And let us pray that Jesus will help us and guide us and strengthen our faith through his love as we try to show our love for him.
So let us stand now for to profess our faith as we say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our petitions before the Lord, who understands every need before we even ask. For Francis, our Pope, who understands the spiritual hunger of Christ's flock, that the church may be nourished and renewed in his care. Lord, in your mercy. For Alan, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and all who feed God's people with the bread of life, that they too may be fed. Lord, in your mercy. For all who feel empty inside, that believers may reach out with new hope and meaning to those who are spiritually impoverished in our world. Lord, in your mercy. For governments and global leaders, that they may be a greater political will to eradicate the causes of material hardship and physical hunger. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all our sick. We pray especially for Labani, who's very seriously with the COVID. We pray for those who are sick in our parish and in our families. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, too, for the intentions of Lucia Lafitte, for whom we're offering this Mass. Lord, in your mercy. We ask, Lord, to welcome all those who have died, especially those who have died through the COVID. We pray, too, for the doctors and the nurses who do tremendous work, that they continue in this way, so that the COVID can go. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask Mary to pray with us and for us as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people, and renew and recreate us in your goodness and holiness. And may Almighty God help us all through Christ our Lord.
my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. <clears throat> and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the past and mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For well, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, our clergy, and all our people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion for those watching online. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you're already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your newly failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. So we sit down for a few moments, please. You will notice on the front page that we have more or different safety guidelines with the change in the situation. We hope they'll change even more that we get to proper normal ways of doing things. But at the moment, we are still taking bookings online for the Saturday evening and Sunday Masses. The numbers will be larger, much larger, so hopefully people will be able to do so. And if you haven't booked, then of course you still come and give your name and telephone number. You only need to do that, one person needs to do for each family. The weekday masses, there'll be no prior bookings for these. You just come if you want to come. But coming into mass, you still have to sanitize your hands as you come into church. Your temperatures will be taken and the face coverings, the mask, the face visor, whatever, will be still in place. We ask you too to try and maintain and follow the social distancing. Cover your nose and mouth when you sneeze or cough. The statute will be put in the right places this week and we ask you please not to be touching them or kissing them. It is important. Any rubbish you have, you put into the bins. And the bins that we're talking about are the two big bins here in the front and the one at the back in the porch there. If you have a newsletter, please take it home with you. Do not leave it behind in the church. Know that the church is disinfected after every Mass. Every Mass will continue the spraying. And if you are pinged or test COVID, positive for COVID and you've been to the church, please contact the church to help us with the track and the trace. Singing, congregational singing and the choir is allowed with social distancing, but no books or missiles will be given out as of yet. The bidding prayers, they will be read by the lectors from next Sunday, the person who does the second reading, that is. Holy Communion will be still under the one kind, but we'll have two queues, so we'll have stewards on both sides, and you'll come forward, and of course, which means that we'll be having Eucharistic ministers back in action. So we'll be having a meeting with them probably next week. The resumption of confessions and benediction will start next Saturday, so 11 o'clock will reconciliation and there'll be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and benediction before the 12 o'clock Mass on Saturdays. The Rosary Prayer will be said before the weekday Masses at 8.40, so 8.40 the Rosary, and then the Mass at 9. The celebration of sacraments and funerals, there'll be no restriction on numbers, as long as, again, there's social distancing between the families of different households. The water fonts will not be used as of yet. And when you're leaving the church, you'll be guided by the stewards, but you'll be able to leave either at the back of the church or the front of the church from next week. And I will talk to the Eucharistic ministers when we meet about home visits. We do ask you please to read the climate crisis in Cafford petition in the inside page and if you'd all do what they're asking us to do, to get in touch, to let them know that we want the government to make the changes for a safer world for everyone. Friday is the feast, the great feast of the transfiguration of the Lord. The Mass is at nine o'clock. I think that's everything. So we stand, please, for the blessing. 
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thank you all very much and have a nice day. Love.